their veins. Mackie and Judd on Score North and scorenorth.com. Oh, there he is, Mr. Mankato. <laughs> there he is, your training camp hero. The dreams of a dozen men who were late round draft picks, plaguing well in full team practice. Oh, he may turn out to be cut before the 53 hole. Gentlemen, mm. welcome to the show. It's Mackie and Judd, Daily Minnesota Sports Entertainment, and today is a beautiful day. It's the start of Vikings training camp, which means it's also the start of our annual Mr. Mankato competition, where under the radar, Vikings players will be crowned and celebrated. <laughs> Happy holiday, boys. Oh. Chris Long from 5 oh. Eyewitness News joining us as our official odds maker. I believe that this is the only remaining remnant, whether involving the Vikings organization directly or outside, that honors Mankato, by the way. Yeah, people always wonder, like, why do you guys call it? You know they went to Egan, right? Oh, re whoa. Thank you. Breaking news. Listen, we just don't have enough of a budget to change all the branding and marketing that we've built up for seven years with Mr. Mankato, so we're just going to keep it. And we like the alliteration. I still drove by the big yellow barn and got some candy and an apple pie on the way here today, so it worked out well. <laughs> you won't be That's denied. A great spot. Emma Crumbies is a great spot to just yes. get nine pancakes and then pass out <laughs> on the way back up right. 169. Uh, so, so Chris Long is here. He is the official odds maker of the Mr. Mankato committee here. And a few things to just, because I think we have a lot of people that are either new to the Score North YouTube channel. We're going to talk about this on Purple Daily. Um, a lot of new listeners over the past couple of years. So if you're not familiar, Mr. Mankato was originally founded on Mackie and Judd in 2014. It is an open source community discussion among Vikings fans and media to help crown and celebrate under the radar achievers, guys who pop up and flash at Vikings training camp. Um, and the parameters are very simple. Eligible player must be third round draft picks or later undrafted counts as well. They must not be established NFL players, and there's some subjectivity in here, and we leave it up to Chris to uh, to sort of sort that out. So, like, you're making – man, we can debate that if we want to. Um, and if, if a player doesn't fall into one of the two categories mentioned, then the committee can decide if that player gets put back on the ballot. And so former winners include Adam Thielen – Stefan Diggs, Cam Dantzler, Kyle Sloter, the greatest preseason quarterback in Vikings history. But longer, let's start. Let's just start with the odds. Let's count down. Let's create some suspense. You've you've spent every waking second all summer. You've well, abandoned your job, your family, and you've just been focused geez. on putting together the Mr. Mankato odds report. Or I did this in six hours last night, but either way, <laughs> works just fine. Still, by the way, it did six, take six hours. Six hours is a large commitment. Every year, I, I just told you guys off camera. Every year, I say I'm just going to do the odds and I'll do some quick bullet points, and then I start, and I start finding out things like, you know, someone's got a kid on the way, or uh, <laughs> you know, someone's hometown is the site of. Sci-Fi Channel's documentary, Town of the Living Dead. I have to include those things. That's and important if, stuff and here. If you guys want, so there's literally like a 10,000-word write-up that Chris spent six hours. If you want the whole thing, scorenorth.com, you can find the whole thing and all the write-ups and uh, information about the fourth cousin of the punter that's on yes. the roster. Grab a so six-pack. We'll, <laughs> so, yeah, well, you might even need more than that. All right, so we'll start the field. Everybody always the, the field is always an intriguing bet. The field hit two years ago when Brandon Dillon won. The field's thirty five to one this year. And Judd, I know you loved when I did kicker to be named later. I think that was a couple years ago, knowing that they were going to bring in a kicker to yeah. camp. Genius. Resisted it this year, but I think it might happen. So if you're on that train, the field is your bet at thirty five to one. Ninety nine to one is a punter, Zach von Rosenberg. I don't see him on the roster, Chris, you may say. Well, they had to release him when they signed, I believe it was to sign Sheldon Richardson. I think if Mike Zimmer wants to play special teams games, he could be brought back to pressure Britton Colquitt a little bit. So wow. I'm listing him on the board by name at 99 to 1. Okay. 
75 to 1 are your former backup quarterbacks, Nate Stanley and Jake Browning. We're coupling them together. They obviously are much farther down the list than they were last year because of the presence of a guy who, oh, I think we'll probably discuss a little bit later yeah. in the odds. So, real quick uh, on, yeah. on Stanley jump in, jump, and Browning. I'll go, but you jump in, yeah. So, I think my guess is if Judd were coming in here to edit the odds, Judd, would you put these guys higher or, or more likely than 75 to 1, or do you agree with this? No, I agree completely with. Stanley, in a very lawyerish move, I would move to sever them because I think Browning's going to enter training camp as the number two, and Stan and Stanley and Mond are going to be behind them. So I, I would actually, in this case, move to sever Stanley and Browning and make Browning his own entity with slightly higher odds. I think the logic here is that Kirk Cousins is is clearly the starter, and he's going to be doing starter reps things and whatnot. But like, if there's another quarterback that will get attention, it will be Kellen Mond. And Jake Browning would have to throw for like three touchdowns in a preseason game, which is possible. And preseason does count when we're sort of uh, tallying the resumes and the credentials of these under the radar players. So I think I think Browning is more likely than Stanley. Um, but obviously, and we'll get to Kellen Mond. We'll see where he ranks. Gee, I wonder. Kellen Mond doesn't need to be the number two guy coming out of camp to be Mr. Mankato, Judd. He just has to be Correct. the guy. Right. But I think that Browning, well, you know what? Keep going. Because, yes. Yeah, yeah. Be, because There's I more to come. something I like here. Let's just pipe down a little bit over there. Let's 60 to 1 <laughs> last <laughs> year's down. last year's special team uh, guys, Dan Chisna, whom I loved last year and kind of threw on his 99 to 1 to win Mr. Mankato as a lark, and he almost did it by making the team despite the fact he played like three months of college football. KJ Osborne, they're both wide receiver special teams. Uh, I, they're both interesting. Osborne, Trending the other way than Chisna, but the fact that these guys have a chance to do some special things are why they're even on the list at sixty to one. Forty to one. Go ahead. No, 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 well, I was just going to say. I mean, Osborne. I mean, at some point, someone needs to return a kick or a punt around here, and I think D.D. Westbrook's going to be the one, the one that does that. He's ineligible because he's an established NFL player. I feel like K.J. Osborne missed a great opportunity last yes. year in this competition and even in the season. There's some guys coming later that I think might fill in the return roles, too. Uh, 40 to 1, three quarterbacks, not a coupled entry, each guy by himself. Amari Henderson, Dylan Mabin, Luther Kirk. We all know about Vikings corners. Somebody's going to have a chance to run up the depth chart. There's room somewhere to do something at corner. You make some amazing one handed interception. You do a pick six or two a la Audi Coyle and uh, Cole in a preseason game. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe, maybe you grab some Mr. Mankato steam. You know, okay. Or you just need an article that says uh, that you're the gambler and you're going to be pick six guy, like Marcus McCauley, who we actually gave a retroactive Mr. Mankato award to in 2007 for his work. Now, <laughs> keep in mind, too, though, there, there's an important curveball that's been thrown for the first time in the 2021 Mr. Mankato competition, and that curveball is this. Fewer preseason games. So, like, this is going to be based more on practice in Egan because mm -hmm. before it was four preseason games, three yeah. of which the Scrabinis just dominated in. Uh, we're now down to two of, of those. The joint practice with Denver could be important as well, but I, I'm just saying – the opportunities to flash in games has definitely been decreased by quite a bit for some of these guys. It's going to help that we're actually in Egan again this year, too. After last year, feeling around in the dark for Mr. Mankato. As long as you fan <laughs> fan me off when I'm sweating profusely today, it'll be good I'm there. I had to climb Buck Hill for a story yesterday. Oof. Not excited about standing out on the practice field today. But, hey, I'm glad <laughs> we're back in. Don't get me wrong. Uh, 30 to 1. Boy, if if there were a Mr. Mankato name contest, this is one of our finalists, and I don't think he wins, and we'll get our winner later. Tough Borland. Football. I mean. That's as football of a football name as you can possibly concoct. Tough Borland is a linebacker. There's going to be some time for linebackers to try to do something. I think the Vikings are, are going to have some depth guys at linebacker. I'm Stalling a minute so I can look through here. There was a really good note with him. Here it is. He and JT Barrett are the only three-year team captains at Ohio State ever. That's wow. Saying, right. So that's saying something. I mean, and his name's tough. Yeah. And Judd, his father played for the USFL's Michigan team. You got the mascot for them? Oh, that was Anthony Carter's team. Um, no, I forget. The it. Michigan Panthers. Panthers, okay. Yeah, I AC. Would not have... I believe AC was a Panther. So that's tough Borland at 30 to 1. 25 okay. to 1. We've got our former Mr. Mankato. Can he do it again? Brandon Dillon. 
Also listed with him at 25 to 1 is another tight end, Zach Davidson. He's the feel good kid, Division II, uh, Central Missouri, I believe. Played one year of college football at tight end. That's because he was a punter. One of the, you know, if, if I had a nickel for every time I saw a guy transition from punter to tight end, I'd be, well, I'd have a nickel. Uh, so Brandon Dillon trying to recapture the magic of two years ago that he hasn't been able to turn into playing time, so he's still eligible. And Phil, yeah, you mentioned he'd be our first repeat Mr. Mankato because all the other guys ended up actually splashing on the roster. So. Yeah, I think in, in terms of Zach Davidson, you know, because some of this is about what will the media and the fans sort of latch on to, right? Stories and unique angles. I think the fact that the fact that he's this guy who does multi, he's like a utility player. He can punt, he can, right? He can catch passes. I think I think there's going to be stories written about him, which elevates his media presence, which gives him a better chance. If he catches a touchdown pass in a preseason game or something, uh, and flirts with the fifty-three, then he's got a real shot here at twenty-five to one. If he if he plays he's six in, foot seven and he's a punter, I love this. Yeah. So if he plays in a preseason game, which he will, and catches a couple passes, and in that same game is asked to punt, what does that do to his value? Because Dude, we it will skyrockets go, it. Yes. We'll go crazy. A hundred percent. Like we'll be like, oh, multi-dimensional. Keep him. <laughs> Something worth going to. I found a good scouting zinger for every guy. I nice. found some scout ease. Courtney Cronin would be proud of me here for a lot of the high-profile guys. Here's the zinger for Davidson: gangly and ungainly. He's an enigma as a oh. one-year wonder with mega production seemingly coming from nowhere. Here was his line in his one year of playing college football, Division Two, but still, forty catches. Yep. Tight end. Forty catches. 894 yards, 15 touchdowns in Division II football. <laughs> he was a monster. 22.4, 22.4 yards per catch. Take Love that it. Kyle Rudolph. Six foot seven, man. Just put him in the back corner of the end zone and let Kirk throw a pass above everyone's heads. Uh, up next, where are we? I was 25 to one, Dylan and Davison. 20 to one, a trio of defensive ends. I kind of grouped a lot of position guys together, odds wise, figuring they all have sort of an equal chance to pop. Patrick Jones, Janaris Robinson, Kenny Willickus. We loved Kenny Willickus last year. Got hurt. Didn't really have a chance to shine. It's going to be tough for these guys because obviously Daniel Hunter, Stephen Weatherly, they're the top dogs. There is even some depth returning behind them. But if any of these guys can jump, the guy I really like is Janaris Robinson. He's a pretty amazing story. His family's home was destroyed by a hurricane. Lives in near Panama City, Florida. And he asked Florida State to help him to make sure it was legal. This is back before players could get paid. Um, to f- do a GoFundMe through Florida State fans and made enough to rebuild his mom's house. And two years later, they moved back into it. Uh, he's done a backpack drive for um, high school kids in need in, in the Panama City area. He led a bunch of the rallies in the wake of George Floyd at Florida State. This guy's he's got leader written all over him, and I really like what, what I've seen and heard from him. Love it. It's another position, too, where like there's some positions that are just way harder because people are going to wonder, and we'll, we'll get to uh, Wyatt Davis at some point, but like, you know, shouldn't he be higher? He might be a starting guard. Yeah, but like, how does a guard flash at training camp? You know, defensive right. ends, cornerbacks, receivers, even linebackers. Like, there's certain positions where you just are going to have a better chance to flash in this competition. I like it. I like it a lot. And I think one of those guys will, like you said, will have the, oh, play at some point during training camp. All right. Now we're getting into sort of the, the, the middle guys. And if you're a betting man or woman, these are. Sit up, because these are the ones, you know, if you're not going to just throw a dart, these are the ones that we think have a shot, or I think have a shot. Uh, another coupled entry for you, Judd. I know you don't love them. Um, running back, Kene Wongwu, and wide receiver, Amir Smith-Marset. Yeah. Basically, those like guys these. are only yep. here to try to run K.J. Osborne out of town and be the new kick-slash-punt returner. They're going to get chances. They are both... Uh, Obviously, very fast in burners. Uh, let's see. Smith Marset, 28.7 yards per kick return at Iowa, number two all time in the Big Ten. Uh, here's the scouting zinger on him. Oh, here's the Judd. Buckle up. All right. Real deal juice can crank it up hot down the field. Awesome. Oh, oh, oh you, know what? It. you know what? That means, Lana, that means nine routes. Yep. That means yeah. nine. Come on. We're talking nine routes. Football. We're talking and, Mr. Mankato. And as for uh, Wong, Kenny Wongu, uh, the scouting zinger on him is elite testing numbers for a running back. Dude, didn't he have? Did he have the fastest forty time of any he of ran, the pro didn't days? Run at the com- didn't run at the combine, but did a four two nine at pro day, and he did See, it. He's two hundred and ten pounds. He's not know, like a little water bug. He's a big dude. Do you I'm know a little nervous. You can me? never. Oh, go ahead, Judd. That scares me 
because if you go back to 2005, I guarantee you, I can find the Troy Williamson scouting report that said elite testing numbers for a wide receiver. Well, yeah, but you're not wasting a seventh overall pick. No, on I know, but, this is what, but I'm trying to think of the, the Mr. Mankato candidates here. If you test well, so it doesn't jaded. it doesn't mean that you're going to get on my field in Egan. Okay, and All right, not, tough guy. And knock them. Oh, okay, off. all right, tough guy. I will say that you, you know, I, I trust the combine forty numbers more because it's more of an objective uh, exercise. These pro day forties. I mean, you might have your cousin Bob off in the corner, like, "Oh, a three point seven. That's crazy. Look how fast he is." Pro days are legit because they've got to have scouts in there to see it. Yeah. But there was reports of a hand timed uh, that was like three hundredths of a time faster. So that see, was that's his cousin why, yeah. timing. <laughs> uh, one other note on Amir Smith Marset, and I like this. This was deep research. Uh, in an interview with Patrick Peterson, I think it was on Peterson's. Um, he's got a pretty good podcast. Mm-hmm. Said that at one point during a, a mini camp or rookie camp. Smith Marset was sitting there and the locker room was kind of quiet and chill. And he's looking around and he gets up as a rookie and says, Hey, where's the aux cord? What's the Bluetooth? How do I do that? He was like, I'm going to play some music. Like, it's too quiet in here. I want to get everybody going. Love it. And Peterson leadership, said, That's, leadership. hey, man. Love that. That's gutsy for a veteran to say it's my turn on the aux cord. And this guy stepped in his, you know, third week in there and did it. So those two guys, 16 to 1, their splash will happen on either. Some ridiculous nine route or a, a kick return touchdown, punt return touchdown. 12 to 1. Two receivers who are on this list, maybe higher than they should be, only because of their names. The first, Blake Prohl. His last name's Prohl. Everybody loved Ricky Prohl. He was the prototypical Caucasian receiver that everybody loved and fawned over for so many years. So we'll put him at 12 to 1, probably a little higher than he should be because he's Ricky Prohl's kid. Next him at 12 to 1, wide receiver, WAP Fillior. Wow. Yeah, who is hard? Okay, who is this guy? Like, are you just H- making up names nope. now at this stage? Hard to for tough Borland to not be the name of the year on the Mister Mankato board. I'm going to read Wap Fillior's line here because I don't want to mess it up. Y- you say Wap, you go, what is that? Like Whopper? Yep. Or like the dance? What? Nope. He's named after the Whopper sandwich. Given name is Mister Elias D'Angelo Fillior. His young yes. father used to take the kids to Burger King on the regular. Dad would always get a Whopper and normal burgers for the kids. Young Mr. complained he wanted the same burger his father had. Wow. Dad said, there's no way a six-year-old is going to take down a Whopper, but I'm going to buy you one and see. He did, and it became his go-to order. At first, Little Wop ran around and started playing football as a six-year-old. The little part faded out in junior high, leaving us with, wonderfully, Wop. His mother, hey. though, still calls him D'Angelo. Won't call him Wop. And he's going to flame broil opposing cornerbacks oh, in three preseason football. games. Okay, that, there's there's that's a lot there. That's got to be a story. Well, and there's more to it. He had, uh, uh, I believe it was before he was born. His parents lost a son, a, a tragic accident, a one year old, and he's got that. So the parents threw all this energy into him, and and he says his brother is still there with him every day. Yeah, this guy's got a lot of stories. Big Ten guy, Indiana. A lot to like out of WAP Fillior, in addition to just the amazing name. Um, somebody's going to find that last roster spot at receiver. And I think whoever it is, especially if it's WAP or uh, Mr. Prohl, certainly we get some consideration for Mr. Mankato. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you, before we get into the last handful here, a quick shout out to our friends at Dennis Kirk and DennisKirk.com. So uh, let's say you're, you're planning on heading down. Maybe you're going to head down to the night practice. This weekend, why don't you hop on your bike? It's hot. It's swassy. Uh, hop on something where you can really feel the wind riding through that that hair, that chest hair of Judd Zolgads as he <laughs> rolls into Egan oh, TCO PC. No, 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 no. Keep your no. shirt on, actually. No. Uh, whatever you need, whatever you ride, Dennis Kirk has you covered. 160,000 parts and accessories in stock, clothing and helmets as well. And if you order by 8 p.m., they ship the same day. When the open road calls... Head to DennisKirk.com. All right, home stretch here. 10-1, to guys. Safety Cameron Bynum. He was a cornerback at California, fourth-round draft pick. Scouting zinger. Suddenness working back downhill is middling. Oh, Mm. yes. Well, then. Football! Football, yeah! Yeah. Not all the the zingers are positives. No, I could spend an hour on the problems that I see then with this, but I won't. Well, that's just one. There were 15 good ones. That was just the most zinger of all the scouting zingers. I'm just picking the I am more not the one that sum, not the one that summarizes the player. Um, 
I mean, who knows? Safety, it's it's Harrison Smith and Xavier Woods and then kind of everybody else. He's going to have a chance. Uh, interesting, Cal only played four games last year, so there's not a whole lot of tape on this guy, and he was still a fourth-round draft pick. Uh, also, at 10-1, to 1, guard Wyatt Davis. He's such an awesome story, and his bloodline's incredible, but he's a guard. That's the only reason he's 10-1. to 1. His father, you probably know this already. I'm not breaking any news here. We fell over ourselves talking about this at the draft. His father, Dwayne Jones, uh, or Dwayne Davis, played... Uh, what was his? I'm, I'm blanking on his name. Jerry Johnson in Little Big League. That's right. He, yes. He was Alvin yes. Mack in the program. He was Featherstone in Necessary Roughness. Uh, in summer school, remember Jerome took the hall pass on the first day of summer school and didn't come back till the final exam? All the same guy, amazing sports movie actor. He played Buster Douglas in the HBO Mike Tyson movie. Yeah. If that's not enough, Wyatt Davis' uh, grandfather, grandfather or uncle, uh, grandfather, Hall of Fame defensive end from the Packers, Willie Davis. Yeah. So he's got real life sports bloodlines and he's got sports movie bloodlines. Like, there's no way he's a bust. That's no what way. Anyway, Ohio State guy. There's a lot there. Go to the website, read. I, I did a deep dive on him. There's a lot there. He and Cameron Bynum, 10 to 1. 8 to 1. This one, people are either going to say is way too high or way too low. Shane Zilstra, tight end. Brandon Zilstra, very popular Mr. Mankato nominee. Yes. Uh, all Shane the Zilstra, ingredients. All the Shane ingredients Zilstra, are yep. here. Six foot five. Brandon was six foot two. Shane's bigger. Uh, by the way, he was a record setting pass catcher at Minnesota State Mankato. Hmm, Shane, that is. Hmm. Where have mm. we heard that before? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, big dude. I, he's going to stand out on the practice field. He has a chance to be that one amazing preseason game. All he's got to do is have good synergy with whoever's getting the twos and three reps quarterback, and he's going to be Mr. Mankato. Your thoughts? Scouting report from when I went out there to watch the two June minicamp practices longer was this was Kellen Mond's guy. This guy was targeted consistently, oh, right. consistently. In fact, in fact, the video of still available probably at the Twitter, um, at our Twitter account for Score North. But yeah, you are. I think you're on the exact right track with how much this guy is going to get a chance to shine in training camp and preseason. Do, do you think Mond and Zilstra get together at some point once they see the odds report come out and say, "Listen, let's band together here, okay? Let's I'll, I'll target you. You catch the passes, get open for me, get me a couple touchdowns in the eleven on eleven full team drills, and let's boost each other's value up this Mister Mankato odds report." I want to live in a world where there's Mr. Mankato collusion among players. Absolutely. <laughs> Listen to his line. Now, Mankato didn't play last year. Uh, their division uh, didn't play because of the uh, pandemic. 2019, 81 catches, 1,676 yards, 18 touchdowns, all three of those Minnesota State Mankato single season records. Dude. Yeah, we, we, we will make our picks before the end of And I got to say here. this. How fitting would it be if a guy who played his college football in the former hometown of the Vikings training camp, for which this very award is named, were to take this home? I mean, it would be a perfect story, you might say. He is your dark horse at eight to one. Five to one. This is the second tier behind your favorite our pair of linebackers. Uh Chaz Surratt is gonna be a really good football player. I don't know how much he does in his rookie year. Very highly touted out of the uh, out of the draft. Now, really interesting note on this kid. He was a four-star quarterback coming out of high school that had offers from Florida, Clemson, and Auburn. Ended up going to North Carolina, didn't click at quarterback, talked to his coach and said, I just want to go to the NFL. Coach suggested, why don't you try linebacker? He did and lit it up. Scouting zinger, plays 100 miles per hour, snap after snap, oh, treats man. running backs like speed bumps as a blitzer. Oh, oh, oh. Inject all of the football, football terms. You know who wants this guy? Yes. Dan Campbell. Dan, Dan, Dan Campbell <laughs> wants this Dan guy. Uh, Dan Chesterot also. Teeth. All right, and when you punch us back, we're going to smile at you. Thanks, and Dan. Pre us down. Th appreciate that, Dan. Uh, he's 24 years old also. Okay. Not exactly sure how. Oh, the punter. I forgot to mention the punter earlier. Zach Von Rosenberg. He's 30. No, he you mentioned him. Did I, but I didn't mention he's no, but 30. You mentioned his age. He's 30 years old. What's, what's, league, what's, he been, what's he been doing the last eight years? Minor league baseball? Six years in the Pittsburgh Pirates system. Only got as high as high A. Oh, he's went damaged to, goods. Went to LSU to walk on as a quarterback, shifted to what? tight end, and then ended up as an all conference punter. Sort of the reverse of Zach Davidson. Sorry, I forgot that. That's a great note. There's a 30 year old in the, in the nominations here. Uh, the other five to one pick, Cameron Smith, the story last year. 
contracts COVID-19 and because of that goes and gets an exam that finds a heart defect that could have been fatal, may have saved his life. It's been a horrible disease. It's been a horrible pandemic. This is a very small diamond in the rough of what's been the pandemic that it honestly may have saved this kid's life. If he comes in and even gets, you know, let's say he's a, 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 a second tier linebacker, you're going to hear a lot about that story, and he's going to be a really, really hot guy for Mr. Mankato. Yeah, love the story. It's, it's all about the storylines. What are people yeah. going to latch on to? And that brings us to the odds-on favorite. Who did I leave out? Judd, the old saying is what? Who's the most popular guy in town? Always the most popular guy in town. Oh, it's back is the, quarterback. Ba- the backup quarterback. Yeah, hell yeah. The Kirk Cousins detractors. There's at least one in this little Hollywood squares that we have here, I think. They are <laughs> yeah. not a silent minority. If Kellen Mond, I say it in the write-up here, all he has to do to win Mr. Mankato, in my opinion, is not curl up in a ball on a side field and weep every day. He could probably do that two or three days as long sure. as he throws a couple balls the other days. He is going to be under the microscope big time. Everyone's going to be watching to see what he can do because... Whether you're for Kirk Cousins or not for Kirk Cousins, Kellen Mond has the potential to be the future of the Minnesota Vikings. If he comes out and is adequate, there's going to be buzz. If he comes out and he's good, it's going to be an absolute wildfire of of enthusiasm and support. And who knows if that's the right move long term or not, but I think that's what's going to happen. See, I think the volatility range here is pretty high and that he's going to have the yes. most opportunity to do just basic things that are going to give him the Mr. Mankato title, right? If he throws a couple touchdowns in, in the preseason, if he if he looks pretty good in seven-on-sevens and gets some buzz, like it's a, it's a very easy path to victory if he does some basic things. But he could also have a practice where he throws three interceptions. He could get strip-sacked in a preseason game. Like, he could look overwhelmed in a preseason game for whatever reason, and his stock could plummet too. So I, I agree that he's the odds on favorite, but I think like he's going to have more opportunities on both sides of the outcome to uh, either fail or succeed here, Judd. I also think what's interesting is with only two actual preseason games, which would be paramount to this, to him being able to take this award. Um, if what we saw in mini camps and accurate reflection longer, we're going to see more Jake Browning than we think. And in minicamp, Jake Browning, I'll say this, was the number two. I mean, they were clearly trying to stash Mond as the three. And I'm curious what that maturation process or thought process is going to be from the Vikings' perspective. So we're sort of at the whim of the Vikings, too, as far as... And and by the way, if you dial the pressure down on Mond, I don't think that's a bad idea. But that's definitely going to impact us and how we think of the voting if he he doesn't get the workload. Because I think we're all expecting, well, he's the two. And I think he will be at some point. But if it's Browning, and that's where Browning becomes more of an interesting story and gets to be the Kyle Slaughter sort of role of, look at Jake Browning. So, yeah, it's a little bit, I think it gets a little bit dicey because we don't know what's going to happen here with usage. Well, let's let's get right at it. Let's, let's make it official here. Let's the four of us here. And I just well, tweeted. I, 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 I think I didn't say. He's even money. He's one-to-one, yeah. even money. He, okay. He's this, the scouting zinger, athletic quarterback Judd with a next level arm who flashes brilliance. Come on, Jake Browning. I know, I know. I'm not disagreeing. I'm telling you what I saw. Judd, you need to put I'll your money it. where your mouth is. You keep bringing up Jake Browning. Let's go around the room and make our official yeah. picks here. Okay. So okay. I just tweeted mine out. I'm taking Shane Zilstra. Oh, I've I've seen enough of the connection in Judd's scouting videos from OTAs and mini camps. I think mm-hmm. Shane Zilstra is going to have a big this, preseason this and training phone, camp. This phone has impacted Phil Mackey's selection. This is the magic phone that also, gets all of the highlights. I think we're we're also like we're so quick to crown Conklin and Irv Smith. Like we just think Irv Smith, this is finally the year for Irv Smith to break out. And well, I mean, I think Irv Smith has a chance to break out too, but he hasn't yet. Why hasn't he broken out yet? It's not like Kyle Rudolph's been, you know. Travis Kelsey 2.0 the last few years. Like, it shouldn't be that hard to beat out Kyle Rudolph to get more than 50% of the snaps. And so I'll just say, like, I think the Vikings' tight end depth chart is a little bit more open for uh, interpretation than maybe we think. So give me Shane Zilstra for Mr. Mankato. Can we go Dak next, Judd? Dak, Dak, yeah, Dak's going. Okay, Let's okay. Dak's go. uh, I'll go with Kenny Nwangu. I'm going to go with Nwangu. I like, I like the special teams angle. 
I think all, all he has to do is basically get a, a punt or kick return touchdown, and he's vaulting himself up there. <laughs> so I, I am taking a preseason moment, and I think Nwangu has the most, has the biggest chance to make a preseason moment. So give me th- Kenny Nwangu. I think what's tough for that is like in the in the practice sessions, they don't always carry out the full punt return and the kick yep, return. Sure. They just sort of stop. Yep. So. You know, you're going to have if you're a if you're a wide receiver because I see some people already on the Score North uh, Twitter posting here. Why is Nwangu so low, quote unquote? Well, no he's only just Wangwu. Wangwu. Yes, Wangwu. Wangwu. Yes. We'll right. There's I pronouncers have, in the article he, for a lot of these guys. But he's not going to have that many chances to show you something if all he's doing is returning kicks and punts until we get to the game. So, that's why he's lower. I wouldn't have taken him simply because of the pronunciation. <laughs> I have tough. no interest Wangu. in trying to remember the Wangu. pronunciation. I'll let there's you know no, that. There's no N. Wangu. Uh, Wangu. Dex, my, if I was a betting man, mm-hmm. and I am, anyway. uh, <laughs> at 16-1, to 1, I, I'm, I'm with you in the logic. So. I, I would take that entry as well since I coupled them. You're giving me Wangu. I'm giving me Wangu and Amir Smith-Marset together. Sure. I think Smith-Marset might have a chance to do some things as a receiver and as a returner. I like you. There's some there's some value at sixteen to one alone. Those guys would have been lower, but I you know if I got to put my money where my mouth is, I think Kellen Mond, the, the heaviest favorite I've ever installed was Alexander Madison at three to two, and I've made Mond even money, so I've I've got to back. I got to go Kellen Mond. Judley. Okay. So I was going to go um, with Phil's pick. The Zilstra story angle is so good, it's but sexy. I am, yeah, it's sexy and it's fun. But you know what? I'm not going to repeat a pick here because that's not my style. So I'm going to go for the middle of the pack. And look, and let me just say that I might have had some spies who got back oh, to me during the cheating. course of OTAs and minicamp. No, it's not cheating. It's getting an advantage on you guys. Score um, North, Bill Belichick, Judd Zolgad. Yeah. Yes. I might have had a camera planted in Egan. You don't know. But um, there is an opportunity here at defensive end. On the right side, there's nobody. Like, I mean, we could talk about Weatherly and those guys, but there's nobody. Um, Daniel Hunter's coming back from a serious surgery, and I think he'll be good. But I also think that he's going to um, not play every single snap. So good I'm going to go. I'm going to go right in the middle of the pack and go with a guy that I was told immediately flashed, impressed them, and because he's on defense, the head coach will love him. Patrick Jones. All right. Patrick Jones, I was told, looked really good in the springtime. And um, somebody's got to like somebody's going to have to play a lot. (laughs) Somebody's going to have to win a job there. And I don't know that these veteran guys that we keep talking about are the answer. So I'm going to go with Patrick Jones, the draft pick from Pitt. So 17 and a half, 17 and a half sacks his final two years. And remember, he will forever be known as the guy they got in the pick that they got for Yannick Ngakwe. There it is. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. For for whatever that's worth. Frame it, baby. All right. That's Chris Long from five eyewitness news. The official odds maker for the Mr. Mankato competition. And boys, practice. We're, so as we record this, practice in a few hours. I'm and, on my uh, way. We'll see what happens. All right. See you out there, Mr. Long. Thank you for joining us. You can Thank find you, Chris Long. on Great 5 work. Eyewitness News. He's uh, He'll be reporting from Training KB Anchors on Friday and Saturday nights, too. So check him out. And uh, is it Chris Long KSTP on Twitter? It so. is indeed. All right. All right, we're going to take a deep breath here. We're going to come back with some write that down predictions and an accountability session on this first day of Vikings training camp. Mackie and Judd.